Have you ever wondered what co-pilot agents are? Perhaps you've been hearing about it, especially if you are already used to the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Have you wondered how they can be helpful to your business? Have you wondered what they can do for you within your business? How can they streamline your operations, right? If you have those thoughts, then you are in the right channel. My name is Emmanuel Adego and I will be teaching you about business process automation. I'll teach you about Copilot AI, about Dynamics 365 customization, Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, how you can do both the administrative parts and the development aspect. But for today's video, our focus would be on Copilot agents, right? Now, what are Copilot agents? Copilot agents are, they are AI assistants, right? AI powered assistants that can help you with a couple of tasks within your environment. They can help you with um, improving your productivity and efficiency. They can help you imp improve the accuracy of how you handle tasks. They can also be a personalized assistant for you to help you carry out your day-to-day -day tasks like create meetings, take meeting notes and whatnot, right? But for today, we are focusing on one of Microsoft um, two called Copilot Studio how that we can utilize that to build co-pilot agents that can help you enhance your business processes and streamline your operations more like you're doing more with less so this is the co-pilot studio interface right this is where you will create the agent so you could do that by clicking on create or clicking on agent so once you do this then click on this button called new agent in this video this is what you're going to learn i'll show you how to create an agent that's one I will also show you how to connect your agent to Microsoft SharePoint list, right? If you don't already know what Microsoft SharePoint is, I would do a separate video on that. And I'll also share a link to my blog. It's somewhere around. Just look for it and click on it. I'll add it to the description of this video. On my blog, I've talked about what SharePoint is and what it's used for, right? So the focus of today is how to connect your co-pilot agent to Microsoft SharePoint list. Currently, Microsoft do not offer that, right? You have to do it in different ways just like what i'm about to show you right you cannot connect your co-pilot agents to a sharepoint list just like you would with a document library so work with me so on this copilot studio environment i'll click on create or agent right then i'll click new agent so once you click it just click on skip to configure i'll do a separate video entirely to show you how to utilize this copilot chat functionality that helps you create agents so quickly, I'll call this an IT help desk agent. Then for the description, I'll just copy and paste. I have it already. So this is what it does. Your description doesn't really have to be long. Where you have to put more work is in the instructions. So I'll copy and paste it because if you do not already know what prompt engineering is, I would also drop a link to that in the description of this video that can help you and to enhance your prompt engineering skill right and before we continue i would want to encourage us to subscribe to this channel because i would keep bringing out lots of fantastic video in the copilot space and the general microsoft 365 space so paste the instruction you could afford to skip startup runs but what startup prompts does is to just give you a suggestive way of interacting with the agent for example for this ticket you could see something like get me all my open tickets get me all my closed tickets they will just be cards on the screen that you could click on to start the conversation with the agent and what we're building now is the conversational agent so i'll click on create we are building a conversational agent and once it is created it's going to immediately take you to the overview screen so here we are you can see your description your instruction and then this orchestration what it does is to utilize generative ai future to determine the best topic or action to route the user's request to i'll tell you about this more in the video now what i'll do next is to click on knowledge I'll click on add knowledge and I'll click SharePoint. Then I'll paste in the SharePoint URL. Then once I do that, let me just paste. So I'll paste in the SharePoint URL and click add. Then you can afford to rename it. You could call it IT help desk knowledge source. And then the description, you could type it this way, right? And then click add. So when it loads, while it's loading, it's trying to add the data source, right? So once that is done, you could 
afford to rename this default conversational prompt right within your copilot um, agent interface if you want to rename this first message you get here it's called conversational starter so all you have to do is to click on topics and then you click on systems you click on conversation start so the bots.name is the name of your copilot agent you can afford to override that and change that so just remove this erase it click type in what you want as the description and then click on save you don't have to publish yet so once you click on save let's go back to the overview menu so we would immediately move now to the knowledge source how do we retrieve that information from a sharepoint list so you click on actions then you click on add actions right and once you click on add actions you then search for sharepoint so once you type sharepoint we would be using the get items right get item sharepoint now when you click on that it will immediately load some configurations on this prompt this dialog box so it's loading then it says connect to right so for the connect to so it's divided into three parts it's divided into the input part the output part and then the details page where you see the details of what this um, knowledge source does so or this action does rather not knowledge source so it's connected to sharepoint already i'll click next and then it says the name of your action so i'll call this get help desk ticket right and then i'll add a description here just copy and paste then for authentication you can leave it as user authentication for the usage description you could afford to just copy and paste and then i'll go to inputs and outputs so for the input i'll click on the site address and then ensure set as a value is the option that is selected and then paste the site url and click done now for the list name uh, i would not utilize this method so that you don't get confused right i'll show you about this later on i'll show you how to add the list name once you have added the site name but for now let's just leave it as adding the site address then you could leave the response settings as it is and then click on add action so it says adding your action this might take a few seconds microsoft will always tell you that it takes a few seconds so once it loads you would then click on it to give you this prompt your action was added click on it i would then click on the action that i just added if you see under the enable column it's enabled by default once you create it so i'll click on the existing action it's loading just be patient and you can afford to also rename the action name then the display name what name do you want it to show under the under the actions um, tab and then you can then click on the inputs tab so when you click on the inputs tab on that site address you can afford to revalidate your site address so what this does is after you have created the action it no longer give you a text box box it will then give you a drop down box so here i could afford to even select a different site right i could afford to change the site then for the list name i can afford to click on set as a value and then i click on confirm now for the value box if it's not bringing this drop down for you you can afford to still type the name of the sharepoint list so i'll click on it help desk request because yeah so if i go to a different tab this is the list it's already existing with this name so once you're done you can click on output to see if there is anything you want to do there anything special and then you click on save right so when you click on save we could afford to let's test let's say for example right so this is for test purpose but if we actually want to build this for an enterprise right there's a different way around it we can add um, validations where if you do not have an open ticket there or if, you, if your name is not present on the it help desk list as someone who has logged a request and whatnot you will not have the ability to request information or we can have a separate sharepoint list where information just exists on how to resolve it support issues so here i would tell it get me all the open tickets so for this test we have just 100 data on the sharepoint list so if i click on this let's see if it's going to understand us it's loading it says retrieving let's see if it will understand us right 
it says retrieving so what i'll do here is to add something called filter so now let me take it to the sharepoint list so if i go to a sharepoint list and i need to filter every open request right i cannot just command the sharepoint list to do that for me i have to click on this drop down click on filter and then click on open or close and once i do this you see that it has reduced the amount of data so that's pretty much what we'll do in copilot but this time it's the agent helping us do this right so what i'll do now is to go back to the actions i'll click on the actions right and then i would add something called filter query to this action and to successfully do this i'll click on the inputs tab and i'll click add so when you click add you'd see different should I call them different filters? But yeah, this is it. Different ways you can restructure the data you're retrieving from the SharePoint list. So I'll click on filter query. And then in the filter, filter query box, what I'll do is I'll say dynamically fill with the best option. So for this one, you're not setting as value. The reason is because a user can, ha can um, add something in the status column, a user can ask something rather in the status column, a user can ask something about a specific column. So you do not want to box this into one particular column so i'll do filter query i'll do dynamically fill so that when the request come the agent is smart enough to know if it's the status column it will check or the name column and whatnot and then i would add the description if you want to right additional settings you can leave it as you've always left it should prompt the user you can click on this and then um yep you can just do these similar settings right and then once you're done this is all you need so the power of this is the filter query that's what we dynamically filter whatever data you're receiving so that it's giving you the specific information you want and i'll click save so now let's retest yep yep so here you go you can see that it's retrieving our information from the sharepoint list now on a different video i would show you how to manipulate this information more how to retrieve it as an adaptive card how to maybe create to a sharepoint list how to do other stuff and make more actions based off of the information you receive yep and now you see that it works so that is it until the next video i'll see you again do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel ensure you click on the subscribe button and ensure you like so that youtube could recommend more of these kind of contents to you and ensure to stay close click on the bell icon also so that you get notifications when i post my next video because i'll post more videos often you could also read on my blog the articles i post there thank you very much see you soon